Hi, welcome back. This is Dr. Burton. We continue our tutorial on Philosophical Foundation by Dr. Surendra Gangadeen. We are in the middle of Chapter 3, Knowledge, Argument, and Presupposition. We are picking up with a discussion about judgment. So reason is used to form concepts, judgments, arguments. Last time we talked about concepts, now judgments and arguments. Thinking begins with concept, but does not end there. The next natural step is the formation of a judgment, a mental act, which is expressed verbally in a statement. In a judgment, the mind relates two concepts by affirmation or negation. A predicate, red, is affirmed or denied of a subject, apple. Some apples are red. So we have a concept, red, a concept, apple. We put them together in, in a judgment and say some apples are red. This is a distinct level of thought, having different properties and relations than concepts. Simple judgments are either true or false. They differ in quantity and quality, according as the subject is understood as all or some. So quantity, how many, quality, affirming or negating. So they differ in quantity and quality, according as the subject is understood as all or some, and the copula, what joins them together, is, is not, is affirmative or negative. Um, so all is, is a universal affirmative. No is, is a universal negative. Some is, is a particular affirmative. Some is not, is a particular negative. These are four forms of the simple judgment. And they can be related on a square of opposition, a tool of logic, which he, which this new version has. The old version does not have the square of opposition images. Um, again, you can take my logic class. I'll, I'll leave a link below. Applied to basic concepts such as being and eternal, we have four statements. So four logical options. All being is eternal, universal affir affirmative, or A for short. None is eternal universal negative or E statement. Some is eternal, particular affirmative or I statement. Some is not eternal, particular negative or O statement. These four forms of judgment are related in a variety of ways, two of which are particularly, are particularly important for explaining knowledge by reason and argument. So the next book page, let's see if I can get it clearer for you. You can see that he has put those statements on this page are the general statements where you can fill in S and P with any concepts. And then on this page, you can see he has used the concepts of eternal and existence. When an assertion is made as true and there is objection, the opposite or contradiction is being asserted. None is eternal is contradicted by some is eternal. And all is eternal is contradicted by some is not eternal. Contradictory statements by the law of non-contradiction cannot both be true and cannot both be false. One must be true and the other false. Contradictories differ in two ways, by quantity and quality. And so quantity is how much uh, universal or particular quality is affirmative or negative. The contradictory of none is eternal is not all is eternal, since both cannot be true, but both can be false. These are contraries, not contradictories. Contraries share a common assumption. All are in the same class. Many disputes argue for contraries, where both are wrong because of a common assumption. This opposition is sometimes called an antinomy. Two, two sides, all or nothing, arguing all or nothing, those are usually antinomies, right? A statement can be disproved by proving its contradiction is true. Or it can be proven by disproving its contradiction by showing the contradiction lacks meaning. Proof of a statement by showing its contradiction cannot be true because it is meaningless is called proof by reductio ad absurdum. Proof by reductio is used often in philosophy. So you, re so you prove the truth of a statement by reducing its contradiction to absurdity. 
Socrates does this often. Okay, so now we're going to move on to talk about argument. An argument is the third and final or complete act of reason. It follows naturally from judgment, as judgment follows naturally from concept. When someone makes an assertion which is not self-evident and is not ordinarily something, something to be believed by testimony, we need reasons for believing what is said. When a speaker gives reasons, premises, for what, are expect, what we are expected to believe, the conclusion, we are given an argument. To give an argument for what we say is to treat our hearers with the dignity of being rational animals. So we ought to give each other arguments. It affirms our humanity. The expectation in return is that the hearer will believe the conclusion of the argument if the argument is sound or will object to the conclusion because the argument is unsound and will be ready to show how the argument is unsound and maybe provide a counter argument. An argument is sound if its premises are true and it is valid. An argument is valid if the premises logically support the conclusion. The rules of validity from premises which are either simple or compound statements are commonly accepted and are not a matter of dispute. Not to believe the conclusion of a sound argument is to disqualify oneself as a person committed to the use of reason and thereby no longer qualified to participate in dialogue with those who are committed to reason. So remember, uh, there is such a thing as common ground and um, to, to not be committed to reason disqualifies a person from co common ground. We can affirm then that we know by reason and argument. So this is the method for knowing, by reason and argument. Argument is one use of reason and assumes reason. There is no argument for reason itself and none is needed. Reason is transcendental or self-attesting. It makes thinking possible. As the laws of thought, it is common ground for all thinkers. Whether thought, and the true-false distinction can be accounted for consistently within one's worldview is not to call reason into question, but one's worldview. If reason is given up, there is an end to all thought. Nothing remains but silence and the question of integrity. What applies to reason applies as well to other basic concepts like being, substance, essence, change, and causality which have been common ground in disputes in the past. The denial of these concepts makes thought impossible. So these are what he calls the transcendentals in the History of Philosophy book. He goes over them in more detail. I'll review them again. Reason, being, substance, essence, change, and causality. These are transcendentals. They're necessary for thinking. They're necessary for making meaning. To deny those is to deny meaning and to make thought impossible. Okay, I think I'm going to pause here. This was a little bit shorter. Uh, we went over judgment and argument. It's like a super mini course in logic. I will make a link to the logic course, the logic playlist down below. If you're interested in learning more about concepts, judgments, and arguments, I highly recommend those videos. Uh, I go over them in depth. So I'm going to pause, and next time we're going to talk about presupposition, our most basic belief.